Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about the five mistakes you're going to want to avoid when applying to the OMSCS program. I'm here to walk you through it. And the last one is especially if you're from a non-computer science background, so stay tuned for that one. Let's get started. All right, guys, I'm going to show you exactly what I use to apply to the Georgia Tech OMSCS program, and I got in, so hopefully it can help you to get in. Okay, so first of all, the thing you should do is step number one is fill out this statement of purpose academic and career plans thingy that they give you. So basically what they're asking is, why are you interested in the program? What do you plan on doing with your degree after you're done? Uh, and it kind of needs to be sort of short because of course they have a ton of applicants. So here is verbatim what I told them. And mainly for me, I was interested in figuring out how machine learning models could run in the cloud because I work for Microsoft as a software engineer in Azure. So I see the cloud every day and I wanted to understand better how you could even make machine learning models run there uh, at full scale. And then number two, they ask you to do this career and objectives background essay. So this one is also pretty short. Um, it's a little bit longer than the statement that we just showed. It's like 2000 characters, I guess. But essentially, uh, it's, it's about the same thing. I mean, but this one, it kind of is more about you. So like, what's your background? Uh, what have you done before this program? What was your GPA? What university? What did you study? What were your interests? Maybe your work experience. That's mistake number two to avoid is not filling this out. So definitely you want to fill this out because these are optional, but they're going to help your case. Give a good explanation about yourself. Give some links, give some details, and that will hopefully up your chances in getting into the program. And then number three, get letters of recommendation because these are going to boost your chances a ton. If you can show from an accredited university that you were able to get a full-time professor to, you know, plead your case to get into this program, that's going to skyrocket your chances. So I got two letters of recommendation from professors that I took classes from at my undergrad. Both of them replied, luckily, and I was able to get some letters from them. It also took a little while, so definitely plan ahead. Like, I sent this email to them in April. The deadline was July 1st, and we came right up to that deadline. So that was like three months notice almost, and it still was like very close. So definitely professors have a lot going on. Um, they need some ad advanced notice. Definitely get started on those early on. And you have them submit those letters directly to the application portal. So you basically give them, you give Georgia Tech the, the professor's email address. The professor will get an email, and then the professor goes through that portal and submits the recommendation letter. So definitely get started on those sooner than later, especially if, for example, you may not even hear back from a professor because they're so busy. Okay. Okay. And then, guys, um, mistake number four to avoid is when you submit, like, any supporting documents, uh, make sure to submit your resume, okay? Because this, this is just, like, a summary of your professional experience. So um, you're going to want to include at least some of your academic stuff. But also remember that Georgia Tech is a university. They need to make money, right? They have to pay for these classes. They have to pay their staff. So you're gonna also wanna explain like your work experience because honestly, what like a lot of um, universities look for is uh, chances of this person either giving back later on to the university or kind of like announcing the name of it, like getting it published more. So essentially, you're going to want to explain like you have real life work experience. Now this one I actually used to get into Microsoft. So if you want to dive deep into this resume, I made a video linked above about that. But essentially, you're going to want to include your resume when you apply to the Georgia Tech program. Okay, and then tip number five. So this is if you're coming from a non computer science background, which is totally feasible. I've already talked to many people that have been able to get into the program doing like business as their minor or major before, or like mechanical engineering before. So they had like no programming experience essentially, but they still got into the program. And so what helped them most was being able to showcase some programming experience on their own that they did before applying to the program. So this, for example, this is a website I built back when I was in college. Um, it honestly did not take a ton of time. I made some videos linked up above about how to make this kind of website for cheap. 
and you can make something similar and just showcase stuff you did in your college. It doesn't even need to be computer science related, but at least this website as a whole shows some kind of skill in terms of computer science. And then guys, bonus tip if you saved at the end of this video is this person's advice is they took some computer science courses at Arizona State University online to show that they could actually pass computer science courses even though they did not have a computer science background. They also took uh, object-oriented programming and some data structures and algorithms classes through Georgia Tech's edX platform. So those are great tips. If you want to get into the program and you don't have a CS background, maybe try this out as well. Okay guys, and then here's one more final tip, or at least some more tips that people have left me. I've asked in the OMSCS Slack about this very topic for non-CS background people that want to get into the program, what helped them most. So people are mentioning here they did MATLAB courses in undergrad, give them some programming base. Um, another person kind of sarcastically said get a CS background, but really I think this person said it best is the admins look for people that are willing to learn something new. So it doesn't need to be that you have a super strong CS background. I mean, if you're just accepting the fact that, hey, I don't know everything, I wanna learn some more about CS, they will err on the side of caution by letting you in. And the program is growing every year because of this. So honestly, I think that's great. Uh, Georgia Tech is really offering some good classes for people who just wanna be able to learn more, boost a career up, yeah.